Take responsibility for yourself. Exercise your self-motivation and self-determination. Practice free enterprise in your holistic home office. Avoid selfish ambition, which is the dark side of human nature. Read all the stories at homeoffice.studio and watch all the videos to get an exceptionally advanced, entertaining education. I thought I'd do another talk about the, uh, what I call like the four pillars of holistic human nature. And, uh, you know, it's just a, my little idea about, because I've studied uh, natural health care for a long time and different Ayurvedic medicine and traditional Chinese medicine and Native American medicine and, you know, and, and also even, uh, you know, biology and physiology and psychology, you know, scientific, you know, modern science of, of all that, especially when I was doing my drug addiction, recovery from drug addiction, I studied it quite a bit. And so, you know, I come up with my own little ideas about human nature. And the, it, is, it involves four main pillars of, of human nature, self-improvement and things like that. And the first and most important one of all is spirituality. You know, faith is, is like a, it's a feature of human nature. And I've noticed that there's really, there's two kind of people. And there, there is a spectrum. You know, it's, you know, from, you know, and uh, between the two differences. But the one is the faithful people, people who have faith in God and, you know, God, you know, and then and the people who don't. And because you can definitely tell there's a difference and um, the results of it, you know, and so it changes people. And the, the people of faith, or in general, not always, you know, there's always exceptions to the rule, but in general, people of faith are usually trying to make the world a better place. That's kind of the part of any sane faith is improving the world. And the people who are not very faithful seem to be more interested in self-improvement. Self-improvement is a good thing, but, you know, selfish ambition is the dark side of human nature and if you're just worried about yourself and it's though it's a big competition that's like the animal world the natural world is very competitive you know the plant all plants and animals are competing with each other for resources and everything and it's just kind of the forest is a you know the that's what it is it's a kind of a survival of the fittest you know evolution and that's part of human nature too and but what human beings have in addition to human nature you know the physical aspects of life is spirituality and this faith and believing in God and that be, we be and because of the faith is what causes human beings to be civilized uh, if it wasn't for the faith and we can sit in the United States right now the you know the more you know how, how would it, what's the right way to say this the the less faithful we the American people become the more violence and just our civilization is just falling apart so fast it's unbelievable how fast it's disintegrating and it's all because we've abandoned our faith you know and america was founded by christians and it was made in the people who made the united states it was made by religious people for religious people and they said in their writings that America, this experiment in self-government would not work if the people are not religious because both capitalism and democracy are amoral. They're not, neither one of them is a moral system. You get your morals from your religion. That's what religion is for. It's divine education. It teaches us moral values. 
This is a difference between a civilized human being and a wild animal. You know, and wild animals, they're, that's, they're fine. That's the way God created them. They, you know, they have instincts. Human beings have instincts in common with animals. But in addition to our instincts and emotions, we have spirituality. And, you know, you know a vastly more advanced intellectual capacities than any animal. You know, no other animal besides human beings has a prefrontal cortex. And so it, the spirituality is really important. And, and it's important that you develop your own sense of spirituality and faith. And, you know, and there's a, a, a you know, spirituality. There's a God. I believe in God and there's a God and you can believe whatever you want. But believe in God, I, you know, because... It's healthy. Not believe, you know, and a lack of faith is, is kind of like being blind, you know. It, and, and it's really kind of interesting because it's not anything you can see. It's not anything you can measure in any way. Uh, you can see the results of it, though. You can definitely see the results. It's almost like kind of like dark energy or something. We can't see dark energy or dark matter because that's why they call it dark matter. But we can see the effects of it. But, you know, why, why are these galaxies not flying apart? You know, how's that light getting bent around those galaxies like it is? You know, it's because they're a lot heavier than they look. Well, it's the same thing with spirituality and faith. You know, you can't really measure somebody's faith, anybody's faith, except maybe your own. But you can definitely see the results. It's pretty obvious to me. I mean, you know, I can't measure anybody's faith. But all I can say is, is that the more our, our civilization is just, I have never, I can't believe how suddenly America has just fallen apart like it, had, it is right now. And I'm, it's really sad, you know, but I'm not too worried about that because I, I, I believe in God and God is, you know, God does not need the United States to accomplish his purpose with, you know, the most great peace will come mm -hmm. and that's a good thing and, I'm, you know, and so I'm not worried about anything. I think, you know, life on earth is going, you know, evolving just like it should be and it's all good. And, um, uh, so then there's, uh, besides faith, there's family. You know, it's uh, the most important, th besides faith, it's the most important thing in life is family. And uh, that relationship with their, your relatives. And, you know, and you should, it, you know, it starts with your, your mom, dad, you know, husband, wife, that relationship, that re romantic relationship. And then it kind of evolves from there and it becomes, you know, two men. You know, the human beings are, uh, we have uh, some, uh, one of the unique things about human nature is that we make love face to face, which is very unusual. You know, it's not, we're not necessary. I'm not saying other, it doesn't exist outside of human nature, but I'm just, it's very rare outside of human nature. And um, so the human beings do that. And with front, and that eye-to-eye -eye intimacy is very significant. And human beings, you know, a male and a female human being become one family. And that's the beginning of the family. And the beginning of the family is the beginning of human nature, you know, civilized human nature, not wild animals, not, you know, two, two legged animals, but it's a whole, it's like the divergence of the human kingdom of life from the animal kingdom of life. Just like billions of years ago in the ocean, the, the creatures diverged into plants and animals. You know, the, the little microbes, you know, and they became, some of the microbes became plants and some of the microbes became animals. 
Well, it's the same thing is happening now with the human kingdom of life is being born essentially on this planet. After all these billions of years of evolution, this new, it's, it's like the apex of the evolution of life on earth is human nature, human consciousness. You know, and so, and that's happening. And, and the, the family is a very, very significant part of that. And getting, you know, the divine law of marriage will never change. You know, one man and one woman get married and they're equal partners, always have been, always will be. The man is the head of the family. That's just the way it is. You know, it's, it's nature, it's, that's the way things are. You know, the woman, typically, she's the one that takes the family. She's the primary teacher of every human being, is the mother. And if the family, if you're having problems with your spouse, and you and your spouse are having the problems staying together, you should look to your parents and ask them for help and talk to them and take you know listen to them and help you know and keep that family together because it's other than the faith in god it's the most important feature of human nature is the family and so you need to protect that and nurture that and cultivate that and keep it strong and keep your family take care of those kids make sure those kids get those kids need love and affection. Make sure they get a good education. Make sure they have as you know as much a good a good start. Give them a good start. That's why we have. It takes twenty years to reach adulthood, man, in, for human beings, and that's you know that's just human. That's the way it is, <laughs> you know. And it's like uh, because. We learn so much after we're born. For one thing, our brain is so big that we we have to be born prematurely. So human beings are actually born prematurely because our brains grow. They're still growing after we're born. So not only do we, you know, sense our the people around our mother while we're in the womb, and you know, and we're affected by that. You know, like the the father, you know, if the mother feels loved and cared for and the father is there, the presence of the father is going to create chemical, you know, hormones and the whole recipe within the womb is going to be different if than if the father is not there. And so that's so important. You know, and having that whole family relationship, and so the it's not so much like the what the father says; it's just his presence is very, very, very significant. And same thing with the mother too. I mean, the mother's presence is significant, and so those two people working together, raising the family, and within the context of the larger family with their parent, grandparents, aunts, uncles, all that. That's the American family, and it's really important to take care of that and, you know, nurture that. And then a uh, couple of things, men and women are equal. Another little thing, kind of, it's a little bit related to family. The best cat place to put it is under family, and that's race, you know, because race seems to be really controversial. I'm, I, that's not one of my favorite topics. I know I can tell you I like my race. I like my family history. I it's very interesting. I study it. You know, I recognize that my ancestors are not perfect. You know, they were kind of violent. You know, I mean, it's like my my you know my Anglo-Saxon relatives kind of did the same thing to my Celtic relatives that the British did to the Native Americans. They came over and made us into a minority in our own country and wiped us out in England. And so, I, you know, I, but I've got this mixture of Celtic and Viking and Anglo and Saxon, and they were all fighting each other, competing, and there was all different tribes and everything. And from what I understand, the whole human race was like that. That was not... You know, my ancestors weren't the only ones that did that. Everybody did that. 
and it's been like that for ever since human beings diverged from the animal kingdom. You know, I mean, this whole process is, you know, the whole human history is a story. That's uh, the different tribes competing with each other. And some win, some lose, and it's just that we've been going along like, just like that. And now we become, we're becoming one. All these different tribes and all these different civilizations are becoming one human race. And that it's one universal and divine civilization on the planet Earth. That's the civilization I live in. And believe me, there's a government and everything. It's a whole divine civilization on, on this planet. And it involves the whole entire planet Earth and every human being. And it has, include, even the wildness. The wilderness is, you know, the human race is terraforming the earth from a wilderness into a beautiful garden. And, you know, everybody's, oh, we're polluting the earth. You know, you know, yeah, we are. And we do need to clean up that mess. And we will clean up that mess and make it more less destructive and clean. And, we, and I say, don't litter, you know. If you don't be complaining about pollution and while you're throwing your garbage on the ground, it's just, I, it's, I'm just ashamed at the tr garbage laying around on the ground around my, you know, Seattle is this gorgeous, beautiful neighborhood city that we live in here. And there's trash everywhere. I can't believe how much trash there is on the ground here. Driving down near State 5, it's just like sickening to see the ground covered in trash. And all the time I've lived here for eight years, and it's like the same trash that was there eight years ago is still there. How, why is that? That's not civilized, you know? We need to get out there and clean up that trash. And we need to not, there, there needs to, racism is retarded. It's, it's, not only is it a crime in the United States, it's, it's morally, you know, disgraceful, and, you know, every race, every human being is precious and noble, you know, all, there's no more superior or inferior human beings, everybody is valuable and precious, and we need to treat each other with loving kindness and respect. The next, the third pillar of human, holistic human nature is uh, nutrition. And that is, uh, you know, the food supply right now in the United States, I don't know about other countries, but in the United States, the food supply is contaminated. And it's contaminated by the Food and Drug Administration and the uh, corporations that produce the food you know they're they're doing things to that food they take the nutrients out of it because what happens is when you harvest a plant it starts to spoil naturally that's na natural you know all life does that you know and so these companies they they process the food and they take the nutrients out of it and put chemicals in it preservatives to make it last a long time on the store shelf you know, and the, the, the problem with that is that, uh, you know, we, we've got to know how, we need some way to get the food, fresh food, fresh whole food into people that live in big cities. If we're going to live in big cities, we need a, a way of do, delivering the food. But I'm saying those, if you take that food, the process, you know, process the nutrients out of the food, then people are still hungry. You know, they eat and they're, they're still hungry because they, there's no nutrients in the food. And so they eat more food. And now we have this old epidemic of obesity and a whole bunch of diseases that go along with that, like diabetes and heart disease and things like that. You know, and we need to stop eating that food. It's, and, and who knows what kind of effect that's having on our, our intelligence or, you know, our mental abilities. But it can't be good, you know. It's degrading human nature. It's, you know, when you eat artificially, you know, it's just... I don't have anything against artificial. I like modern technology, but all this, you know, fake food and 
sugar and salt and everything, you know, it's like sugar and salt should be like a, tr a rare treat, not a staple, you know, and I, I'm guilty. I mean, I, 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 get, I eat, I like ice cream and candy and, you know, I let, you know, but I'm just saying we got to fix that. That's something that we're doing right now that is not healthy and we can fix it. It's something that we can do something about. And um, don't take drugs. Drugs are poison. You know, it tastes really good, but it causes insanity and death. And it's like, no matter, yeah, and marijuana is the worst drug of all. And it's not, you know, and part of the reason it's the worst drug because it's so sinister. It's, it's not like, uh, you know, it doesn't have any really dramatic effects like heroin and, you know, methamphetamines, you know, or so like people are so devastated by it and everything like that. But it's very subtle and people live long lives using marijuana and they're all so happy and contented and everything like that. And the pro problem is, is we're not supposed to be content, you know, to live in you know, submission to the, the elite, you know, ruling class. That's not what we're supposed to be doing. They're, they, they're legalizing that drug because that's what they want us to do. It's just, oh, you know, get high and you, you don't really care that much. That's exactly what that drug does, marijuana does. You know, you, you'll just, you know, it, you still feel the pain. You just don't care about it that much. It's not, it doesn't bother you as much. And I know that's true because, you know, my teens and 20s, I was using a lot of drugs, man. And I know what I'm talking about. And it does that, exactly that. When I read that in, the, in you know, the research documents I was looking at, and I read what marijuana does, you know, and THC does to the human brain and how it affects you. And I said, that's exactly right. That's exactly what it does. Because I remember when I was using that, that drug a lot. And so, and it, you know, the whole thing about the memory, it does that, I'm telling you. I can, I can, it's really obvious in my own life. My memory, it's really hard for me to remember people's names and things like that. And it's, it's a bummer, you know. I just wish I'd have never taken any drug in my life. But I it started out drinking and drugging, you know. Started out drinking and then I tried other drugs and oh this hey, these are it's like different flavors of ice cream you know it's chocolate and strawberry you know and everything like that and it all they all taste good to me and um, but thank God I quit and uh, hopefully I'll stay quit for the rest of my life and um, but don't use any drugs you know improve yourself. Keep on working on improving yourself for your whole entire life. You know, stop using drugs as soon as possible. The, the sooner you stop, the better. The sooner you start investing your money in uh, buying, uh, you know, stocks and bonds or whatever, you know, investing your money, your cap, and start building up your capital, the better. The sooner you start, the better. And, um, which brings me to the fourth pillar of human, you know, the holistic human nature, which is productivity, professional career, private property, I believe is a really good, valuable idea. I, I think private property, you know, it's got, there's got to be a certain amount of private property and privacy as well as there you know we need the economy to be well regulated because we don't want you know if we didn't regulate the economy we'd eat all the fish and then our kids would starve to death and things like that you know because there's so many of us on the planet right now and this idea that i hear rumors about certain people wanting to decrease the population of the earth i those people are they need to be locked up in a, an institution because that is not up to any person to decide. And trying to genetically engineer human beings is crazy stuff, I think. And um, we need to be 
making it possible for people we need okay so the population is between seven and eight billion right now we need to be planning for 10 billion people to live on this planet and acting accordingly and you know and uh, you know that's what our leaders need to be thinking about you know i'm not against leaders what i'm against is any kind of ruling class leadership is a good thing by the way and uh you know but it's always ad hoc you know individual you know people organize into different things you know people are not born you know leadership leaders are not born leaders are taught and leaders are chosen by the people and the people choose the leaders and the, those leaders make decisions and things like that and they're really accountable to god you know they're not accountable to the people they're accountable to god because that's the kingdom of god you know and but every God rules the kingdom of God through every human heart, not by some few people that are ruling everybody else. He He rules everybody. But uh, being productive and you know creating something valuable and adding value to the society and the economy, that's what you got to do and you got to work on that all your whole life that's what we're here to do is to make the world a better place for our kids and you know and it's fun i i being productive is way way more fun than not being productive you know the feeling of joy you know yeah sometimes i get into this thing about you know the difference between happiness and pleasure is quite you know Pleasure is not necessarily a bad thing, you know, but it's not happiness either. Happiness, I, I remember reading one book where the guy was talking about, you know, happiness is, that's the human soul, is happiness. And um, peace, you know, that, that's the very nature of the human soul, is happiness. And, you know, striving for that, you know, is you can't really seek happiness. You just have to be spiritual. And the happiness kind of is, the happiness is, in my experience or my personal understanding of, of what's going on here, is you don't like seek happiness or pursue happiness. You, you just be productive. And you submission to God is a really the most important cause of true happiness. And it's just like cause and effect. You submit to God, and the effect is true happiness. You know? And submission to the nature of submission to God is freedom. Freedom, the nature of freedom is submission to God. You know, the, it's like because freedom is lawful not lawless, you know, wild and free are two entirely different things. Wild, you know, then the difference between the, the rule, you know, freedom and, and wild is the rule of law. And God makes the rules, you know, and we, and that's a good thing, you know, it's, it, and that's the kingdom of God. We, we, and when we follow that, we prosper. You know, we're, we're happy in general, we're peaceful, we're ha and, and productive in the world. We advance waves of progress from now on. You know, the civilization on this planet right now, the cartoon, you know how it'd be a cartoon and you'd have uh, one guy beating up, uh, the, and two guys are beating up on each other. And one guy is saying, you know, so, talking about, the full of spirituality, you know, and, and, and the other guy said, no, that's not the way it should be. We want to be empty of self, you know, and they're both just trying to kill each other, you know, but the tr they're both saying the same thing. They're just saying that one guy is trying to say full of spirituality and the other guy is trying to say empty of self. It's two different ways of saying the same thing. And um, so, you know, we got to, you know, 
keep on working, keep improving yourself, keep seeking the truth, improving yourself and making the world a better place, you know? I, I'd love to see the, all these beautiful cities that we, we're building right now and cleaned up, pick up the trash and have people cleaning that up. And instead of having all these homeless people laying around in the garbage and, and just, it's so disgusting. And I can't believe anybody could even imagine that that's okay. You know, and um, I don't know exactly what, how to deal with it, but I have my opinions about we should do this or that, you know. But I, I think it should be, you know, I, you, you got to be a little bit careful because you people want to be able to go camping and things like that and not be in trouble for that. But... This idea of sleeping on the sidewalk in a city like Seattle that, or L.A. or any big city. It's, of course, no. Who, who, who could think that's okay? And we need to have some way for the government or you know, the police to approach people that are sleeping on the sidewalk and say, excuse me, are you all right? And them have the authority to say, no, you can't sleep here. And if you don't have a place to sleep here, we'll, we'll, we'll get, you can sleep here. Make sure they got food and shelter and they can clean themselves up and make them employable and help and have counseling and work on vocational rehabilitation should be the core, you know, prison should be a uh, uh, vocational rehabilitation center. Every prison, every homeless shelter, every everything should be how teaching people how to be productive teaching people about finance and money and how to be responsible for themselves and their money because you know you want that's why the parents should teach that okay there it's their responsibility to do it but they don't always accomplish that for whatever reason you know and when so society should kind of back the parents up as, as I you know one way of putting it you know schools should be teaching that and schools should be teaching you know we have this another interesting thing that's going on is this whole global cloud of artificial intelligence and smartphones and TVs and you know laptops and stuff and so we have human consciousness is evolving so fast and we're becoming connected. I, you know, I have conversations with people all over the world on my computers, you know, and I'm kind of a, you know, like uh, I'm kind of coming up from the streets of Western North America. I mean, a poor, you know, like, I mean, really serious hardcore homelessness and drug addiction, and that's where I came from. And uh, I'm working my way out of it. I'm making progress. Thank God, and hopefully I'll keep making progress. Hopefully I'll live long and prosper. That's what I want to do. And I wanted to help you do that, too. And this, these four pillars of holistic human nature, which are spirituality, family values, nutrition, you know, eating fresh whole food, not processed food, and and productivity, being productive. You know, and owning your means of production. You know, own your means of production. That's an important part of human nature. That's free enterprise. You know, private ownership of the means of production is the most productive econ economic system in human history. You know, we should keep doing that. It's, it works. It works. Just trying to have this collective ownership of everything doesn't work. It, you know, it's never worked anywhere. Although the one is this whole free and open source software, it might be working a little bit, you know. <laughs> um, you know, because I like free and open source software, and that is very, it's communistic. You know, and so, you know, communism has some good ideas, but, you know, there has to be private enterprise and free enterprise because that's what produced all this wealth. This was wealth in the, this prosperity in the human civilization was created by private enterprise, not by 
the problem right now is is we have these big giant corporations have taken over the world and the in this world this prosperity was not created by giant corporations you know they, they've been part of it for right uh, from the very beginning the corporations but now they've kind of taken over and they've wiped out all the small businesses in it's the small business that's where the innovation comes from you know they think up things that nobody else ever thought of they're you know they're not being told what to do all the time now we have corporations telling everybody what to do and the state tells the corporations what to do and then the corporations tell their employees what to do and it's that's not what how we did this we didn't do that you know we didn't create we didn't go to the moon and and do all that stuff with that kind of a culture. That is not, you know, it's just a nasty, uh, oppression is a terrible thing. You know, it's like oppression is the absence of justice and justice is the absence of oppression. It's, it's, it's a violation of hu human rights. And it doesn't matter who's doing the bullies, no matter whether it's the government or the corporations or religious authorities or any other anybody you know bullies are criminals they always have been and always will be you know because God makes the rules God rules every single human being and other human beings don't don't you know, so anyway, I just wanted to make a blog post. It's gone long. That's uh, you know, it's, I, it's I love human nature and civilization. I love the human race, and I want to help as many people as I can prosper during this life on Earth. You know. It's fun. Life on Earth is a, an adventure, and I. There's been a lot of trouble in my life, a lot of pain and suffering, and all kinds of stuff like that. But I, I just enjoy life. I. Think it's 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 wonderful. Life on Earth is a wonderful adventure. And. Um, thanks for watching the video and. I hope you keep coming back and watch many of the videos on this website. Read my, read the stories on the website. Read my, you know, buy my book, Holistic Home Office, and read that. And hopefully I'll be able to earn enough money with this website to, uh, I, so that I could work on it full time. And uh, instead of just, you know, not working on it and then doing these big, giant, you know, one video a week kind of thing. I'm, my, I'm still learning. I'm making some progress. And uh, I'll keep working on it. And I hope you will too. And I, I hope to, I'm working on building an audience right now. I don't know if I'm doing a very good job of that. But I'm, that's what I, that's kind of my main motivation right now that's the stage of development of my business is to d attract an audience and entertain and and educate my audience you know it's entertaining education you know I, that's what i want to do and i probably have to work on the entertaining part I, it's probably not all that entertaining to listen to me tell stories but anyway i hope you come back and listen some more and I'm, I, I need that one thing I probably should work on doing is some kind of feedback system. I've always wanted to have a feedback system because I I do I like talking, you know, having a two way conversation and that that's very helpful for me. And, and it kind of okay, what do you want to what do you want to learn? What do you want to learn? I'm curious, you know, I'm open to that. And because uh, I can teach you, I can help you. I, I've been preparing, I've been studying this for a long time. When, when I was kicking drugs, I wanted to write the book about recovery and how to recover. And so that's what I've been doing. And now here I am, I'm building this website and telling these stories to help as anyone who wants help 
to they can benefit from these stories. I mean, there's nothing harmful. I'm not interested in causing any trouble. Um, you know, if if you if you think that, then you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. Because I want to cause peace and prosperity for all mankind. That's what I'm trying to do. So, thanks for watching, and live long and prosper.